Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to our Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Spotlight. And today we are having a chat with my dear friend, Miss Sarah Moore. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning. So, hey, before we get started, I am going to share uh, your mini bio here. You have an amazing story. You are currently the executive director for Colorado Dragon Boat. And that's how we all know you. Everybody knows you, Sarah, and the amazing work you do. Um, and you've been the executive director since December of 2017. And the Dragon Boat, the Colorado Dragon Boat encompasses the Colorado Dragon Boat Festival, which happens every July um, at Sloan's Lake, and mm -hmm. the Colorado Dragon Film Festival, and the Emerging Leaders Program. And you've been the uh, district director for the Longs Peak Council Boy Scouts of America in Boulder, Colorado. And mm -hmm. your bachelor's degree is in science and allied health sciences with a minor in biology at Grand Valley State University in Michigan. And in your tenure, your proudest accomplishment has been bringing the organization into a better financial position. And in 2019, the Colorado Dragon Boat Festival was the largest Dragon Boat Festival in the USA and North America um, with over 150,000 attendees over to the two day festival. That is outstanding news. Um, Thank you. And uh, something that you and I have uh, in common is that we are both alumni of the Kakahashi Asian Leaders Program. You attended in 2019, and mm -hmm. you were able to travel with eight other Japanese leaders that who are influential in the communities. And um, what people really need to know, what an honor this is, because um, only you know eight to ten. Asian leaders are selected all across the United States, Guam, Hawaii, um, by the consul generals. And so this is a, a trip that's paid for by the, the consul general in the country of Japan. And they treat you like kings and queens and mm -hmm. share so much of the culture. And so that it's such an um, elite and exclusive opportunity. Um, so I'm so excited and proud of you for that. Another thing we have in common is that both our grandfathers are Japanese. And mm -hmm. so that makes us a quarter Japanese. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, but some of your passions include rock climbing. You are quite an athlete. And <laughs> and you love learning about your Japanese heritage. So there's a little bit about Sarah. Welcome again. I'm so excited to catch yeah, thank up. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> it's great so, to see your face. <laughs> I know, I know. We, we have fun times when we, when we hang out and usually it's around food. So yes, um, <laughs> it's, hopefully it's soon like, we'll be able to do that again. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So, mm -hmm. hey, I want to go way back to your grandfather who lived to be 97? 97, yeah. Seven. yeah. Very long life. <laughs> Talk to me about Grandpa Masamichi. Yeah, so um, his name uh, was Masamichi Suzuki. We called him Mac for short, um, but he was a Nisei um, during the time of, of World War II. So um, that being said, he was actually interned um, during World War II up in uh, Tule Lake in California. Um, and he actually has a pretty interesting story where he was actually taken out of his third year of med school um, in California and then interned in, in Tule Lake. And uh, because of the lack of um, resources, obviously, that the internment um, camps had, he actually acted as a doctor there. Um, so it was a, an amazing story just to hear um, about his life there um, in the internment camp and just hearing um, his experience and his uh, emotions towards it. He took everything in stride. Um, he was able to leave um, uh, before the war ended, uh, which was great. He actually, he, um, he uh, uh, says thank you to the Quakers who helped him get from California um, all the way to Michigan, actually where I'm, I'm originally from, um, where he finished up his medical degree. Um, and uh, after that, he actually uh, 
was a part of the ABCC, um, which is the Atomic Bomb Casualty Commission. Um, so after the war, he actually went over to Japan and studied fertility and victims of the A-bomb in Hiroshima and um, um, Nagasaki. Uh, where he actually met my grandmother, um, ironically, who is a uh, woman who was a wo woman from Wyoming. Um, so a, a white woman from Wyoming who went over with the army as a nurse um, and they met over there, uh, which is just uh, their, their love story to me is just so heartwarming and um, in inspirational. Um, they met over there. They, they came back to the U.S., um, tried getting married in, in Vegas and were denied marriage uh, because they're interracial in Vegas of all places. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> I know, right? Um, but they were able to get married in, in California later later that year, which was um, was good. But uh, their, their love story has really shaped um, me, who I am, and then they're my role models throughout life. Unfortunately, both have passed um, already, but um, they they would be in their hundreds now. So they they both had very long, um, beautiful lives for sure. <laughs> That's a beautiful story. You know, um, during this month of May, as I've been talking with different Asian Americans, some adoptees, some first generation, some fourth generation. You know, we know that there's no monolith. Um, there's no right way to be Asian. And you and I, who um, come from uh, families that have been uh, biracial and interracial to also embrace this part of our culture, I think speaks to um, even the next generation of, hey, you can enjoy any part of your history in any form. I mean, you uh, are a leader in one of the most celebrated Asian culture festivities that we have around the largest in North America. And so what would be your response to young people to say, well, I didn't grow up, you know, in Asia and I don't speak the language, you know, what would be your message to them? Yeah, definitely. I think actually that was one of the reasons why I was drawn to Colorado Dragon Boat Festival when I first moved here. Um, I just have such a, a pride in my heritage. Um, and, and like you mentioned, I'm only a quarter, but it means so much to me. And I didn't grow up in, in a um, society where it was just Japanese community. It was, it was very diverse, which is great. And I think that really helped me have more pride in what makes me different and unique um, as an individual. And uh, like I mentioned, my, my grandparents were a huge um, huge role model to me. Um, but I think anybody who might be struggling with their identity or just want to learn more about different cultures, just seek it out. Definitely. I, I am so open about um, talking about my heritage, probably too much. Like I love talking about it. I love telling everybody about my grandparents and just the amazing cultures we have here in Colorado, um, which is I think why I love Colorado Dragon Boat Festival so much. You don't have to be Asian to go to this festival. You can be whoever, whoever you are, you will come and you will learn something new. You will experience something amazing. You're going to eat the most amazing food and just be happy surrounded by diversity. And I think that is so important in our community. Now we need to start planning for next year's Dragon Boat Festival. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, groups and individuals can purchase a boat to race. And it is the most fun and most physical thing you can do. I know AAC did it one year. Can you share a little bit more about uh, the cost involved in purchasing a boat to race? Yeah, for sure. So actually, um, Colorado Dragon Boat, we actually own all of our boats. We have uh, 10 in total. So you just have to pay a registration fee, um, which is $1,000 per team, which you usually have on average 25 people on a team. So if you split that up, it's really not too bad. And it all goes back into the maintenance of the boats and making sure that you guys can have a good experience. Um, but there's there's two kind of boats that we have um, racing for Dragon Boats. We have um, the Hong Kong style, which is a more sleek, um, competition style boat and then we have our iconic flag catchers which has the dragon head and dragon tail on it and you actually literally have someone sitting on the dragon head and grabbing grabbing a flag so if you and 24 of your friends are interested in getting a very very good workout on Sloan's Lake I would highly recommend um, putting together a team and you can just register online usually our registrations open up um, February um, of that year and then you can have a cool name and come and just experience the wonderful athletic competition of dragon boating. 
there a limit to the number of boats or, I mean, you have 10 at a time, but is there a mm -hmm. limit? So um, pretty much we have dragon boating from morning until dusk, and we try and get as many races in as possible. Um, usually we have uh, two to four boats racing at a time. Um, I think uh, last year we had a record high of almost 60 divisions going um, on Saturday and Sunday. So I, I think that might be one of our limits, but I mean, definitely register. We'll, we'll get you on a boat no matter what. <laughs> okay, so something we can do to train for next year, we, we can do push-ups at home and strengthen our upper body. And if you have dumbbells, mm -hmm. you can strengthen <laughs> your biceps um, mm -hmm. and triceps because you're gonna need a lot of upper body strength and you gotta be light right? You have got to be light. <laughs> yeah. So um, I actually got on a boat um, for my first time a few years ago and I'm, I like working out. I, I feel pretty athletic and I was like, oh, this won't be too bad. I was dying. It was so, it was so hard, but so fun. Um, it's, it's a lot of more cardio than I would have thought. And it's actually full body. So if you've ever been on one of those row machines, mm -hmm. um, it's like, that, but you're actually, you're paddling. So you're not rowing, you're paddling. Okay. Um, so you have your favorite side and then maybe even it out the other time you go on but um yeah I think as long as you stay in cardio shape and maybe do some extra push-ups you'll you'll be good <laughs> okay so we all have a whole year to plan mm -hmm. okay so yes. <laughs> talk to me about um the film festival yeah. Yeah. So the film festival is actually um, relatively new for the organization. It, it was in its fifth year this year. We're actually the only all Asian and Asian American film festival in Colorado, um, which we're, we're very proud of. Um, and pretty much we just showcase and highlight all the contributions from Asian um, directors, talent, Asian American um, talent from all over the US and all over the world. Um, and this year we actually partnered um, with Denver Film, which is such a fantastic partnership and we're really looking forward to continuing that for next year. Um, but we definitely had, I think, a record high of attendees this year. We had a lot of creative panelings in there and then our variety of uh, films that you could see was absolutely amazing. We we started off the uh, the, the film festival with um, a movie on foraging. Um, and so we had a creative uh, conversation with foragers after as well. So it was just it was a very good experience. Um, I tell you what, this year, um, 2000, 2019 was a really exciting year in the world of Asian films because Parasite yes. mm -hmm. won an Academy Award, right? And I'm like, I yeah, saw they it. Were, I think five. Five. Yeah. five. Um, and for those people who haven't seen it, like that's a great quarantine movie. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. I remember sitting there um, when it was in a, a tiny theater before it got like really big. And I said, man, that's an amazing foreign film. And when they won best film, I thought that was the perfect film because it's so touching. How, what was your reaction? I, so I was actually, ironically, I was at an Oscar party at Denver Film. They actually host one every year. And um, you write a form with um, who you think is going to win. And I circled Parasite and I was like, this better win. And then when it did, I think I like jumped out of my seat. I was so excited because a, it's a fantastic movie. It's, it's amazing. Like you said, you should definitely watch it during quarantine if you haven't already. But just what it symbolizes as a movement for Asian and Asian Americans um, here in the US. I think this is the first foreign film to ever win the Academy Award. Um, and it, I mean, it was up against some really good films as well, but Absolutely. just the fact that, that it won is I think huge for, for our community and we can really um, take steps forward with this. So really excited for next year for the Colorado Dragon Film Festival. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I don't want to do any spoilers for those people who haven't seen it, but I will say um, it has a very interesting twist at the end. And so <clears throat> I don't think it's a film for ch young children. So I right, would yeah. suggest that you have young children uh, watch that film, but uh, just uh, be prepared for something mm -hmm. very unique to happen at the end. <laughs> um, so <laughs> I'm, Okay, so... Uh, I have to share this story. So I, I went to on the Kakahashi trip in 2018 and um, they asked me and I'm like, 
we're looking for someone to go for, you know, in 2019, do you have a recommendation? And you were the first person I said, oh my goodness, Sarah Moore, you need to like talk to Sarah Moore. So when you were selected and you gave me the news and we had that beautiful dinner with the consul general and um, right before you went, I, I, I don't know if I was more excited for you but I felt, I felt like, like your big sister, like, oh my gosh, it's going to be amazing. And I was following you every day. And I was really upset because I don't think that you posted enough pictures, enough videos for <laughs> me to follow your trip. I was hanging on every post. Tell me, um, give us an insight to how that trip was for you. Oh my gosh. It was, it was life-changing. It's so amazing. Um, so before that trip, I had been to Japan twice before, um, and any chance that I can get to go back to Japan, I will take in a heartbeat. So I thank you so much for recommending me for this, for this program. Cause it was absolutely beautiful. I, um, didn't really know what to expect until our dinner. And you let me know a lot of the, um, little tidbits and advice. Um, thank you for the advice on not gorging myself at every meal because more meals come <laughs> right after. And, oh my gosh, I cannot get enough of that delicious food. Um, but it was, it was absolutely beautiful. So I was actually the only um, person from Colorado. Um, so I met such amazing people, um, Arizona, California, Ohio, um, Washington, DC, and then Guam as well. Um, and everybody there, you could just feel their passion and their, their leadership and their, their power as an Asian leader. And it was just absolutely wonderful to meet them, learned so much, got to learn more about the economy over in Japan and just different businesses. I think we, we toured around, we actually were able to go to Hiroshima and we actually went to what is now called the RERF, but that is actually where my grandfather worked, um, the ABCC. And I actually, um, so back in 2016, I actually did um, like a, a pilgrimage with my, my family when my grandfather passed away and we went over there as well. And my grandfather actually only had one of the only colored cameras right after the war. So I printed off quite a few of his photos that he took back in um, the late 40s and kind of recreated those photos. Um, and one of them was at the RERF. So he actually was there when that whole facility was built. Um, and they have him actually, there's photos of him like on the, on the wall and like his photographs are being used on like the history timelines. And it was, it was just so heartwarming and amazing to be able to go there. Um, and Hiroshima in, in general, obviously we went to the Peace Park and learned more about the atomic bomb and, and World War II. And I highly recommend um, for anyone who goes to Japan, obviously it's not the most uh, heartwarming or happy experience to go to the, the, the Peace Park and, and hear that history of the A-bomb, but it's so important. And I, I highly recommend going to Hiroshima and kind of getting that experience experience of such a unique um, time um, period and then how Japan has come out of that experience as well. Um, but oh, yeah, sorry, I can go on forever, but it was yeah. absolutely amazing. <laughs> I could listen to you go on forever. I mean, it's, it's so heartwarming. And, you know, we had mentioned like the pin um, that was handmade by an A-bomb survivor when I was at Hiroshima too. And she says, every time you wear this, remember peace. Cause we definitely mm -hmm. don't want to go back and experience something like that. Again, the trauma um, mm -hmm. for generations physically um, with, with what happened after that atomic bomb. And so, and I'm amazed at how open and loving and receptive the Japanese people are to America after our history of war. I mean, that to be able to forgive and then build an alliance is such a powerful thing for us to remember that we all belong to each other. And there's just so much meaning in everything that the Japanese people do that, you know, I'm, I'm proud and I'm sure you are too, to have that as part of our legacy and heritage um, that we can pass on to others. Um, but yeah, we were supposed to catch up over dinner, but we're doing it now, you know, and hopefully soon. Oh, I think the restaurants are opening back up. So maybe that's our excuse to get yes, back. Together, yes, I think, I think today they're, they're able to go to 50%, which is very exciting. 
So anybody, well, well. anybody watching this uh, video, go go patron your your favorite Asian Asian uh, small restaurants. Um, yeah, and sure. then afterwards we're gonna have to get a, a date on the calendar. So mm -hmm. okay, and and one thing that people don't know is like how serious of a rock climber are you are like you don't just go to the gym and go like 10 feet up like you are a serious rock climber <laughs> and people don't see your much like you have I've seen your Facebook page and I've seen your muscles and you are quite <laughs> the athlete how did you get started into rock climbing Oh, thanks. I'm, I'm actually, I'm, I, I feel like it's like green screen or something. I'm not, I'm not as cool as you're making me sound, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I actually started um, climbing in college back in Michigan. And if, if uh, you don't know Michigan, it's, it's hilly, but it's flat. There's no place to climb. So it was pretty unique that I was able to get into rock climbing there in college, but um, started doing that. Um, I also, I dove in college um, as well. So I was kind of just jumping from uh, sport to sport and then I found rock climbing and I just fell in love with it um, and surprisingly enough I'm afraid of heights and of drowning so the two sports that, <laughs> that I was doing in college were were uh, counterintuitive um, but fell in love with it and actually I think that's probably one of the reasons why I decided to move from Michigan to Colorado um, Colorado obviously is a mecca for all rock climbing and any day I can get outside and get on rock um, is, is a good day to me. So um, I absolutely love it. So if you want to go rock climbing, I'll take you for sure. <laughs> okay, I'll, I will try it. I, I tried it once in one of those like um, team building things where you're like, fall back and we'll catch you, right? It was one of those like, mm -hmm. you know, events. And it's like, really okay, good for, for, for bonding, yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. But the rock climbing, that was scary. And it was just like one of those boards, like outside, um, mm -hmm. up in the mountains. But after I did it a couple of times and then I got my confidence, just don't look down, just don't look down, right? And because uh, mm -hmm. I, I have a fear of heights as well. Um, well, listen, what is something that is bringing you joy and putting a smile on your face during this pandemic? Oh man, um, I think one of my favorite things um, is seeing the community come together. Um, so uh, I think as, as everyone may have heard, unfortunately we had to make the hard decision to cancel the Dragon Boat Festival for this year, um, just to make sure that everybody stays healthy and safe. Um, unfortunately, I'm sure as, as people know, there has been an increase in um, racism and aggression towards the Asian community. Um, so I've been working with other uh, organizations, Asian organizations to kind of help combat that um, and, and give uh, education um, priority and just make sure everybody has um, the information they need in order to either report or, or be in a, in a safe space. And I would say just the amount of community leaders that we have here, like like you and everybody that you've been spotlighting, is just so heartwarming and amazing to see everyone come together for a cause and and just just come together as a family. And I think that's my my favorite part. Um, Dragon Dragon Boat, um, we call it our Dragon Family. Everybody who participates in in the Colorado Dragon Boat Festival, all 150,000 people. Um, we're, we're all a family that comes together and helps and supports um, each other. And I think that's probably one of my favorite things is just seeing either it's like a social media post about a, a local business that they, they go patron or like delicious food that's being um, taken out from, from all our delicious Asian restaurants and just coming together as a family and supporting each other, which is really heartwarming. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, Sarah, my friend, my sister, I just love you so much and I miss you and um, we we must take some time and go get some sushi and um, yes, <laughs> and just laugh and talk and catch up and hug and all the stuff we haven't been able to do for the last, mm -hmm. you know, two and a half months, but um, I'm so proud of you and so grateful for uh, you stepping up and taking care of the community in the way that you do and being such a humanitarian and, and leader. And um, I've enjoyed this time. So yeah. it's so nice seeing you. And thank you so much for, for spotlighting all of these amazing leaders that we have in the community. And I hope that you have done a spotlight on yourself because 
when it comes to the top tier, you are definitely up there. So thank you so much for everything that you're doing. And I think you mentioned you've been doing this every day for 31 days. That's, <laughs> that's amazing. Thank you. <laughs> you're much more to Zoom and online technology than I am right now. So <laughs> nice job. Well, hey, um, enjoy your today. What is today? Today's Wednesday. Yeah. Okay. I try to keep track of the days when you're locked in. Um, enjoy your Wednesday and um, I will talk with you soon. Okay. Be well. You as well. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.